Hello, everyone. Does this work? Is this okay? Yeah. So I'm Mihai Alicia. I'd like to start uh, by saying that it's a pleasure to be here. And it's simply amazing to witness firsthand how far you know, this whole space has moved. Um, I mean, just think about it from uh, this idea that blockchains can be used for decentralized digital currencies. In five years, we leaped to the notion that they can be used to run a decentralized world computer. And the crazy thing is that it still feels like we are barely scratching the surface and we're still figuring out what and how we can build with it. So with that in mind, today I'm going to present uh, Akasha, a decentralized social network powered by the Ethereum blockchain and the interplanetary file system. But before diving into Akasha, I'd like to briefly mention the defining moments that led to this point. And my story in this space begins in 2011 when I discovered Bitcoin. And this year was uh, an awakening for me in many ways. And this is how a few months later I created Bitcoin Magazine together with Vitalik here in the room. And I served as editor-in-chief until late 2013 when my full attention was required for what was shaping up to be the Ethereum project. Uh, as a co-founder in the early days, I've led the Swiss efforts to establish the business and legal infrastructure, which was critical for the Ethereum pre-sale campaign. And uh, <laughs> it's like Google trying to update in a minute. Speaking of Google, we had a situation where it was calling for fonts on a Google server and like people that have installed the Akasha application were like, why is it trying to connect to Google? <laughs> so that was kind of fun now in the middle of the presentation. Um, so getting back to Ethereum, after the successful Ethereum crowdfunding campaign, I uh, oversaw the Ethereum operations as strategic manager and vice president of the Ethereum Foundation until late 2015. Now. Following a successful Ethereum genesis, when everyone was like, yay, it actually works, look, now it's time to build our dreams on top of this thing, I focused all my energy on Akasha, and today I'm going to show you how far we've come in the last year as a project. Now, Akasha, as a word, has roots in Sanskrit and means ether. And in this culture, ether, or Akasha, was envisioned as a sort of ethereal network connecting humans with each other and infinite knowledge. Uh, through this thing called Akashic Records, which, you know, to some extent uh, uh, act as a, acted like a sort of universal database for storing emotions, ideas, thoughts, and experiences forever. An internet of consciousness, if you will. Um, and uh, Akasha also stands for an acronym, namely Advanced Knowledge Architecture for, for Social Human Advocacy. And we'll touch a bit why on that. So now that we covered the meaning behind the name, let's move on and understand the why behind the project. So in my opinion, Akasha is at the same time a technological and a social experiment designed to offer us a glimpse at a future in which our human, I mean, human, relations, human relations in general are not owned by corporations. A future in, in which freedom of expression and privacy are not outsourced, but back in the hands of people. And through our work, we wanted to prove people that it is possible, that we can do better, and that the original dream behind the internet is not dead. It can still be achieved if we creatively combine this new technology, be it Ethereum, some other blockchain, interplanetary file system. There's a whole array of tools that are now available, which haven't been before. So uh, getting back to the dream, the dream was about empowering and connecting people, not about mass surveillance and mass manipulation, which sadly is today's reality. But, you know, even if it sounds fancy and noble and like, yeah, sure, let's do that, uh, it also means that we have to solve some big problems that have been challenging for quite a few years when it comes to Internet. Things like censorship, for example. And censorship is becoming more and more uh, of a problem these days, as we've seen on various occasions, from Facebook to Twitter to YouTube and everything in between. From accounts banned to tweets deleted and posts removed, we have witnessed increased censorship on, L, on all major news stream uh, and you know, social networks uh, in general. 
Another big and spiny one is privacy. Now, even if the majority of the existing uh, web services and social networks present themselves as free, uh, you are invisibly paying in micro violations of your privacy. One like at a time, one email at a time, one chat message at a time, until this whole thing and your data that you are leaking, like a, a snail trail behind you, takes the shape of an abomination which can predict not only where you are, how are you feeling and with whom, but also where you'll be tomorrow, with whom, in a 10 meter range. And that's quite spooky. And for those raising their eyebrows, uh, I strongly suggest reading Networks of Control, uh, a report on uh, corporate surveillance, digital tracking, big data, and privacy. It's like, it's even, it's even worse than you think it is. <laughs> like, it's uh, terrible. And this leads to, you know, another big one, collective memory. I mean, today we are in this situation where our posts, our, you know, even Wikipedia and stuff we Google online are hosted on some server sitting somewhere and operated by some entity. So you have that some one there. And this parallels with uh, George uh, Orwell's, you know, 1984 quite uh, strikingly, when we uh, look at ourselves and our society as an information-based society. Uh, when you're also putting into perspective the latest, you know, fake news problem, uh, you have the perfect conditions for the emergence of a ministry of truth, uh, as depicted by George Orwell. So in, in other words, basically we have like the ideal mass manipulation tool automatically serving only the true news to billions of people. Yeah, it's, so we got rid of the fake news problem. Uh, but if things keep going the way they are, Soon, 2 plus 2 equal 5 could be the new truth uh, discovered by humanity. But, you know, uh, maybe we are a bit hard on the internet and like these corporations uh, because these problems are older than the internet. And we've bombed on more, you know, more than once in, in our history uh, in them. For, from books and libraries destroyed to people being tortured and everything in between, we have seen many, many, many bad things manifesting across ages as symptoms to these problems. Uh, then this new internet thing appeared and you know, in the beginning it was all this excitement. Yes, we finally have humanity empowered, liberated, a new kind of revolution. Um, and it was uh, believed, you know, like uh, truly believed by the pioneers and everyone in this space uh, as it was proclaimed also as an independent uh, home of mind in the uh, classic independence of the cyberspace uh, declaration. But however, today, again, we find ourselves in a position which is quite different from what we were envisioning 20 years ago. And our freedom of expression and collective memory are outsourced in the hands of corporations with absolute power over them. And uh, to make things worse, actually, this is what, like, no, there's no internet uh, connection there. If you want privacy or free speech, you're not really getting those on the internet currently. And since the data passes through uh, their servers, technically it is their corner of the internet and they can do whatever they want with it. And after you clicked, I have read and I accept these terms, which, you know, is like the most popular lie these days. Uh, they, you already gave them the right to do whatever they want with your data. So they don't care anymore about respecting them, you just sign. And uh, getting back to like uh, problems, uh, these problems are older than the internet. Even, the, it, even if the problems are older than the internet, the scale at which they manifest today is unparalleled in you know, like human history, since we're talking about billions of people affected by them. And this is where Akasha comes in as a product. And it was envisioned as a simple to use but meaningful channel of expression. And uh, I'm about to show you um, shortly some uh, you know, features, limited, a limited set of features we currently have. Uh, but the intention is to leverage these new technologies in an attempt to build a social network that has basic human rights embedded in software. So where you have like this freedom of speech thing and you have this privacy thing, instead of making them like feature and optional or premium, uh, they are like just default because this is how the entire thing is designed to work. 
So we are in this situation where we have the old problems and they are faced with new solutions. And uh, this you know, changes things a bit since the problems such as you know, who owns my data and should my data be sold uh, without my approval, which should be like no, uh, are now faced with new ways of uh, thinking. And even uh, some of them can be solved from design stage. Because in the end, the root cause behind all this mess is currently on the internet is that you have someone handling your data. From censorship to privacy, it all starts from someone being in the middle, having your data and full control over it. But what if we do things differently? What if we connect users directly with each other? And what if we put users in direct control over their identity and data? Well, we are about to find out. Uh, this is Akasha uh, running on uh, a Mac. Uh, by the way, uh, how many in this room have uh, tried Akasha? Whoa, okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, well, way better than expected. Uh, <laughs> I was like, maybe one, two. Uh, so for you, it, uh, there, is, there won't be so much new stuff to, to show, but there are some new features coming that I'll present, uh, mainly in the 05 release. Uh, so basically getting back to the application when you start it, like there's no like downloading a blockchain, synchronizing, timestamp, p -p -p TX confirm, all that stuff. Like for, for a user starting, you know, like one of these things like Ethereum or Bitcoin or crypto in general is like, oh man, I see myself like in Mr. Robot. Now it's like, I'm like uh, doing uh, cool stuff. Like you know, maybe I'll leave this as a screensaver so I, I look smart. So in, in <laughs> In this case, you know, uh, it's like you make it simple. Like uh, it, you even have a line there. If you haven't heard of these things, just don't worry. Simply click, click next, and we'll take care of it. T take care of it. Uh, so you have an express setup, which is recommended. Currently, it runs on a private net, so it downloads like a private chain, and it's recommended not to to mess too much with it. But there are also advanced uh, advanced options. I'll skip the advanced. Just focus on you know how smooth the entire process is. So. Uh, let's see. Yep. So click next. Uh, and this is where it starts uh, get client since it comes bundled with uh, a get client and an IPFS client. And this is where it connected to a bunch of peers. It downloaded the, the chain and now I'm up to date. Now regarding the complexity, you can see in the through the status window that we can see the uh, stuff happening in the back background, like chain downloading, synchronizing, chain imported, all that stuff. And we also have the IPFS log showing like the daemon is ready, listening, and you know, you're all ready to rock. Uh, so um, the important key uh, or like the important takeaway here is that when you start Akasha, you do not connect to a server, right? That's, that would be bad. But instead of connecting to a server, you connect to a swarm of peers. And you know, otherwise it wouldn't, wouldn't be really a decentralized social network as we, it would still depend on some entity operating a server somewhere and we already covered why that is a bad idea. Now, let's get back into the DAP and see how identity works, like uh, walking through the process of, uh, whoa, 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 creating an account. Yep, let's see, yes, so here it is. I clicked uh, to create an account and uh, you know, it's pretty standard what you would expect from a normal social sort of web thing. Uh, you have an ID, you have a first name, a last name, you select a passphrase and uh, you also have like optional details like your avatar, your background, maybe a short description, some links to your Twitter, Facebook, whatever other uh, social media you're using, but we'll leave that out. So this is how a basic account works. Uh, you just input that data. And here in the background, you're also creating an Ethereum key. Uh, you're also receiving a, an, a token transaction from our faucet, which is like, you know, just uh, to test thing, things out. And all this stuff happens, you know, like in a pretty uh, user-friendly way. You don't really have to understand what's happening. You, you get some uh, updates in there. And after the ether is sent to the newly created key, you're actually publishing a smart contract profile. So without having to understand uh, you know, a lot about blockchain and all this cool stuff, 
you just uh, creating, created a smart contract profile that can be accessed only by you through the private key you generated. And um, as you can see in the background, we can also find the transaction ID which was uh, uh, behind launching the smart contract. Uh, now, uh, this is how, by using Ethereum in this case, and IPFS for storing things like the avatar, the background, the image, and all that stuff, uh, we can uh, move from uh, this paradigm where we have to rely on this central provider for managing your credential on, and online identity to a paradigm where each user is in full control over their identity. And this is pretty cool because this leads to personal identity freedom online, which is a thing completely, you know, like missing from the internet these days. And um, here's the kicker. Your identity is also your wallet because you have created an Ethereum key in the background. You're all set with uh, an Ethereum address. So uh, it wouldn't be much of a, you know, a leap to have uh, also payments embedded in this. So this is my account. You see there's an Ethereum address in there. And this is uh, an Ethereum address of the newly created account. I'm just going to log in with this, uh, with this account to uh, show you a bit how it is inside. So this is on, uh, on the Akasha tag inside the stream. I'm just going to, uh, this is like the profile panel where you see notifications and stuff. But this is the people uh, tab where you can see all the latest profiles created on the Akasha network. And for example, this uh, Rick Hall is one of the latest users created that created an account. As you, as you just saw, I clicked follow. And since we have this 14 second delay between blocks, we had to, you know, like some of the interactions are happening in the background while you're able to do other stuff. Like for example, now I'm sending a tip to his address and in the meantime, I can also read, for example, his post, which is like, he's curious about blockchain and Ethereum projects. Seems like a smart thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, another uh, cool thing is that the app votes have a quadratic uh, voting mechanism, which have micro uh, transactions attached. So you can send anything from one cent to about a dollar by uh, simply playing with the weights uh, in your voting. Uh, the, the value being in ether. So uh, this is uh, pretty much how the financial interaction works. And as you can see, you can easily tip other people by simply pressing the three dots and you know just click the tipping button, same dialogue. You have automatically pre-filled. Uh, this is something that the ENS uh, probably, yes, we, we should talk. Uh, we'll, we'll, yes, definitely. And uh, again, we have the same scenario where previously we had this uh, entity in the middle and data centers holding your stuff or processing, uh, processing your uh, payments. But the cool stuff is that since we're uh, building on top of Ethereum, we already have like a payment network in place. We can, you know, this is like a side benefit, a side effect when, or the synergy uh, by building on top of Ethereum. And, uh, this is quite interesting in the possibilities it opens and the synergies born from this. Paying, uh, for example, for an Ethereum service outside the Akasha ecosystem because we contracts can talk to themselves and basically you have like addresses um, to you know sending money home to your friends or family or crowdfunding the next idea are all like you know viable options suddenly because you don't have to worry about this stuff. It just works. So this is freedom of transaction, which is also pretty cool. Uh, to have, and then here we are, uh, the the big one, censorship resisting publishing. This was a bit of a um, a challenge since uh, storing all the stuff on blockchain is like super expensive and it wouldn't like be uh, smart. Uh, so uh, we, here we use like the IPFS for storing content, and the IPFS hashes pointing to the content are stored in a smart contract. So that's uh, happening in the background, but to exemplify how like publishing works, uh, again, I'm going to uh, log in with uh, random cat because on Akasha, nobody knows you're a cat. Um, yeah, that was sort of a joke. <laughs> 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 yes, it worked. 
So here we are, uh, bonjour Paris. Uh, we are writing some stuff in the editor. It's like uh, simple, medium-like, uh, you know, uh, get away the clutter and all the stuff that's not interesting. We are communicating through the ether. Uh, Ethereum plus IPFS equal love, all that stuff. And then uh, that we have, you know, like the romance in there, we hit publish. And this is uh, where you add some tags. Uh, for example, Akasha, Paris, and Edcon seems to, to be relevant. And then you can, for example, change the preview shown in the, in the card that's generated for each uh, published article. You also have some, uh, some license options from all rights reserved to where in the middle attribution to creative uh, commons. You can also select like which one you want to have as default. And here we are publishing stuff on IPFS and the Ethereum network. So for the user, uh, you know, like pretty much resembles publishing on a normal app, but uh, what happened behind was completely different. And uh, some of this uh, uh, complicated stuff is actually hidden on purpose because it's not exactly, you know, helping users to publish things. It would definitely be something interesting to, to learn, but okay, yep, quite. I'll try to squeeze. So again, we remove the publishers. Each one is their, uh, you know, like their own publisher. Uh, you don't have to rely on some uh, entity or server somewhere. Users just communicate and share information directly. And uh, by taking this approach, I think we are solving by design the censorship problem since, you know, no servers, no problem. Well, there are some other problems, but N not those problems. Um, yeah, like these problems are better than those problems. Like so, so. Uh, we are we are working on it. We'll touch upon that uh, later. So here I am connected from uh, the other identity, my identity, and I can uh, vote. So basically, I'm seeing the entry published from a different account. And as you can see on the right screen, you also have like a zero ad, which is like our t test token currently. Uh, as uh, I'm typing a comment uh, saying bonjour and bonjour everyone, you should also see the balance in, in the right corner updating. So the user has now received 0 0.1 ether from a sim simple upvote. So this is completely separate from tipping, which are like normal transactions. And this is freedom of speech, you know, like uh, you don't depend on anyone, not even us to publish stuff. It's there, the infrastructure is in place. You have this application making it simple to use it, so just go ahead and enjoy this, uh, this right. Uh, now, Whisper is a really cool uh, layer um, in Ethereum, and recently we started to uh, experiment with it uh, a bit more. And uh, the first feature we implemented was chat, which is group chat. And you have like a Slack-like or IRC similar interface where you, know, you can type messages and uh, you can also like join various chat rooms. I'm just clicking like Edcon, writing something. It's just me. Maybe later I'll see you there. Uh, and I can uh, get back to Akash Alpha to see that messages are uh, published and all that stuff. Now, the cool part again is that instead of relying on some entity, uh, sh uh, you know, passing the messages from one user to another, we have this uh, protocol uh, that allows uh, people to communicate directly to each other without any, you know, third-party interference. And there are a lot of uh, privacy-enhancing things that uh, we just started uh, playing with. And this is uh, uh, the most recent experiment, uh, whisper-based searching. And this is uh, quite cool, I think, uh, because it, uh, you know, it solves the problem of, uh, like, uh, really intrusive uh, user tracking, like what you're looking for, when you're looking for, what goes on in your mind when you're searching for that thing. And uh, just to showcase how, uh, how simple it, is, it looks in this, you have that, you know, the search button which was disabled until now. And now I just type Paris and magically you have like the article there. Yes, we can search for content, uh, which is like a big achievement in, in itself. And uh, just, you know, like uh, to uh, brag, I'm going to search also something like Ethereum, I think. Yeah, so it works. Uh, it's uh, quite new. It might be glitchy from time to time, 
but uh, soon we'll also introduce for people and, and more areas in, inside the application. Uh, as you can see, it works also for Ethereum projects. So uh, Ethereum uh, articles that have the keyword in there. Uh, and again, this uh, touches upon the uh, entity managing the searches for you, uh, and then this entity selling also your data and your searches to other third parties which are analyzing you. So it's like a, an inception fractal of, uh, you know, like really bad stuff. But here, by using Whisper, you just, uh, you make a request, you can see the request and what data you're uh, getting, but you don't know exactly who made the request, which is kind of cool. You have untrackable or private searching. But this is privacy. And uh, from the beginning, what we made to achieve with this application is to make it simple in the user interface, but significant in the way it works. So you have these uh, rights that we want to see respected online. We embedded them in software and like provided a nice UI. And this is uh, something I'd like to uh, stress, and I'm running out of time, but uh, Akasha in the current form is just like uh, an experiment scaffolding of sorts, uh, which uh, should allow us all to test ideas, to test bold ideas. And one of the ideas that you know, many people ask is like tokens. Uh, when are you doing an ICO? Uh, is Akasha going to have its own token and so on? So we said, we're going to leave that at the end. Uh, we're going to take an experiment driven approach. We're going to test various token models and see which one actually fits better in the context of a social network. And you know, the idea is that we deserve a better web. We now have the tools to build it. And this project can be about taking back our freedom of speech, uh, which is something we should hold dearly, personal privacy and collective memory. And you know, in the process of doing this stuff, we get from this, pro this picture where like the internet and free speech and privacy are totally unrelated things, to this paradigm where the internet, privacy and free speech can be united by these new technologies making the original dream behind the internet real. And uh, even if we don't know everything from the start, as someone pointed out a bit earlier, we know something. These basic human rights, such as freedom of expression and privacy, must be part of the solution, because otherwise they're not good solutions. And you know, this is quite exciting, and uh, in the opening, someone said something very inspiring, that we have it like cool, we have it good. And this is like a crypto renaissance, you know, you having your laptops, traveling to the world, coming up with brilliant ideas on how you can put these things together and build something that can truly change the world. Change the world to blockchain was also a, a word that I've heard quite often. And this is our take on how we can, you know, build a better future because the future is not a place we get to visit, but a place we get to create together. And uh, on this note, I'd like to end by saying that uh, there are still problems as uh, pointed earlier. And this will be a marathon, not a sprint, but we expect every, every step of it to be enlightening. And uh, things like tokens and incentives are one of the challenges we invite all of you to you know, brainstorm and come up with ideas. We have a few ideas related to how we can incentivize the creation of you know, like, uh, open knowledge. And uh, I think someone from Koala IP is here. Uh, yeah, we need to talk also. Uh, identity and reputation is another big one. Uh, reputation was like, yeah, reputation would be so cool, but it's still out there, kind of theoretical. Now we have this framework that we can use to test the, the ideas we have. It might not be perfect, it probably won't be perfect, but at least we have a starting point on top of which we can iterate. And, you know, not least scalability and architecture when it comes to building this stuff. The contracts and like the user interface is not yet open source. We are planning to open source them uh, by the beta launch. Uh, but in the meantime, anyone that is interested in, you know, like helping out, collaborating, or coming up with ideas on how we can solve any of these challenges or has some interesting idea from uh, uh, the Ethereum ecosystem on how we can collaborate is invited to get in touch. And uh, we can also exchange information. If you have further inf uh, questions and stuff, I'll be around. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, 